Welcome everyone to Mailfuzz TV, I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about The Twilight Zone Season 5 Episode 7, it's called The Old Man in the Cave. So spoilers for the episode, the premise of this one is that we're in a post-apocalyptic future of 1974, which at the time was 10 years into the future, and the episode even references that the bombs that dropped that caused this apocalypse were about 10 years ago, so... You know, very much try to be contemporary at the time. But it's a small village of people who are surviving by taking advice of a mysterious old man in a cave who keeps telling them what food not to eat because it's contaminated, where not to plant crops because it's the soil's contaminated, things like that. And the sort of the force that comes in that kind of shakes things up is this little group of soldiers effectively whether or not they're self-appointed or there's actually a, a, a system in place that's actually trying to like re-establish some kind of order in government is another question it's never really completely answered in this but uh, the leader of them french played by james coburn he comes in and challenges a lot of these ideas that these people are living with and the leader of the community uh, goldsmith who's the one who keeps getting the messages from the old man in the cave uh, debates with him, argues with him, tries to not have him interfere with how the, the town is run and how the people follow the orders of the old man in the cave. And that's very much it, and it builds up, of course, to a reveal of who the old man in the cave is, or, more precisely, what the old man in the cave is. I don't remember exactly what I said last week, but I did say something like, I bet it's not an old man. <laughs> I'm sure I said something to that effect. And sure enough, it did turn out to be something else. Um, a computer, specifically, which I, I, it's not like the most surprising outcome, uh, except for the fact that we're in the 50s in terms of when this episode, oh wait, no, 60s, we're in the 60s, sorry. It started in the 50s, the show, but we're in the 60s now. What's interesting about this type of ending for a Twilight Zone episode made and released in 1964, give or take, is that I do genuinely wonder, because I don't know what the average person's, like, understanding or conceptually how much they get what a computer is in the 1960s. I genuinely don't know. And I don't want to make assumptions, I don't want to just assume that everyone has no idea what a computer is, other than the select few in certain industries who are starting to use them, or whatever. But of course, computers looked very different back then. The one we see in this episode is basically the size of about three, three fridges. There's not a screen, there's not a keyboard or anything like that. You know, there's, there's nothing like a modern computer. It's basically just a big sort of data center looking thing. And that kind of tracks with, you know, computers used to be much bigger. Yeah, there's a famous photo from, like, it's like a, a hard drive from the 50s, and it's the size of a fridge, and it only holds, like, kilobytes of data things have changed so much but i think it's interesting to me just how high concept this probably felt at the time i think now the idea obviously it's still science fiction now but the idea that a computer is the one making decisions or a computer is intelligent in some way whatever you're doing with it is something that we kind of expect from science fiction now it's that those types of stories are 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 just a staple of the genre at this point. We've been doing it for so long, ever since computers seemingly were invented. This just happens to be, I think, a very, very early example, I would have to, you know, imagine, because, you know, the, the, the first form of the computer was effectively World War II era. It was, um, you know, what that movie, The Imitation Game, is that what that was called? I think that's what it was called. The one with the... I think it was Cumberbatch was in that, but that told the story of what led to effectively the first computers. So I think it's just interesting because we're so in the early days of that concept, just how a 60s audience would react to this. And in some ways, they probably felt like so science fiction -y because not everyone had their hands on a computer at the time. Then maybe it was easier to believe that they were doing wondrous things that computers today still can't even necessarily do. But you understand, it's kind of like when you watch movies in the 90s and, like, the computer's, like, UI is, like, a virtual reality <laughs> or something like that, and there's all these, like, silly things because 
they're using computers a lot more in the 90s in movies and TV, but they're still being very far-fetched with what they can actually do. And that's something that's changed as well since then. So I just, it, it was really making me think as I was watching the ending of this episode, just how the audience reacted to this. And I think this episode is pretty good and it holds up quite a bit because of how it kind of treats its themes and the, the concept that it generally builds up. This is a post-apocalyptic story before a lot of the genre-defining post-apocalyptic stories were made, much like computers weren't as maybe well known yet post-apocalyptic stories like we, we we've just been recording the mad max movies on the atomic cinema experiment and they're not went out yet but when many people think of post-apocalypse one of the first things they'll think of is mad max 2 they'll think of the road warrior maybe you'll think of the fallout video games maybe you'll think of uh, oh well, that's kind of a spoiler actually there's something rod serling's connected to that it turns out to be post-apocalyptic i won't say what it is though and that's obviously closer to twilight zone uh certainly so it's just it's interesting that as i was watching this and i was seeing so many of the genre ideas of post-apocalypse stories already present in this uh, particularly there's a moment where french the major is talking about some of the different towns and communities that he's encountered in this post-apocalyptic America. And he mentions that one of them, uh, like, treated this statue or so- something like that, like, like, you know, like they were zealots, like it basically turned into a cult. And immediately I'm getting flashes of almost every po- post-apocalyptic movie or game or whatever that has a group that sort of turned to sort of outlandish religion. And religion and faith is definitely a big theme of this episode. One of the final lines of dialogue spoken by Goldsmith is that faithlessness, faith, faithlessness, if I can say that word, is one of the big components of why this ultimately is a tragedy of, of these characters. And I think one of the things I like about this episode was how it kind of challenged various ideas. What I mean by that is... I am someone who is who is atheist, so it was very easy for me early on, separating the fact that I'm watching a Twilight Zone episode and I'm expecting something cool in the cave <laughs> when they start talking about the man in the cave, but what we're presented with at the start of this episode is this group of people who are just accept who are just expected to take it on faith that this old man, quote unquote, in the cave is correct about certain things. Now he's correct about certain things that are all very life threatening right he's, he's telling them not to eat certain things not to do certain things but these people are starving they're suffering so they're really tempted to eat this canned food that the man in the cave is saying no you can't do that and he's been right before crops they've planted in areas he told them not to uh, were rotten they didn't they didn't grow properly uh, the, like the they've had enough experience with the old man in the cave that they're they're listening to him. Although it does still seem like it takes Goldsmith to come down and convince them and really hammer home and argue on the old man's behalf, much like a preacher might for for a god, right? There's a little bit of those vibes there. And because I am atheist, if I'm t- t- to t- forget this is a Twilight Zone episode for a second, when French comes in and says that they're listening to you know, a bunch of nonsense to keep them from enjoying the things they have because they have a lot of food, they have a lot of booze even because there's like a like a wine cellar in, the, in this little town. And it's like, no, you should be enjoying this, you know, have a meal and he takes like a bite of something or whatever and like people start digging in and it's like the floodgates open and they all go to it. it you know, it was hard for me not to on some level kind of understand and sympathize even though french comes off as very abrasive he hits goldsmith at one point and is taking charge and taking over which is a little he's not very pleasant of a character but it was hard for me not to sympathize with the basic logic that they were operating under with this episode and i think what i like about where it goes is that if my instinct was to say less with the 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 more religious allegory side of the episode it's very, very fascinating to me how it turns it on its head when you find out that this voice they've been obeying and following as if it was a god is actually a machine. A machine, you know, created by man. It's a computer. It's the opposite of just blind faith. It's it's completely and utterly scientific. It's something 
I mean, I don't know how the computer is taking its readings or checking these things, but presumably it's accurate because it's a computer and it's just, oh, the radiation in this thing is too high. It is unsafe to eat. It's just giving facts. It's just accurate. And it presents this kind of interesting dichotomy of faith in something unknown, but in this case, the unknown thing out to turn out to be something that's very accurate, which the people themselves still reject in the episode. They destroy the computer. They throw rocks at it because they don't want to be controlled by it anymore. And the reward is that they all turn up dead uh, because they've all been eating the contaminated food, except Goldsmith is left alone. He's a lonely man when everyone else is gone at the end of the episode. So it's a very bleak ending, for sure. I think the way it challenges the notions of how even the information coming from a machine which is working entirely on logic and scientific data and things it can determine feels like it's the... like to, to these people it feels like something they can question in the same way that other people will question religion and question the things that you know god has said or the teachings of, of various religions and is this just a bunch of mumbo jumbo that comes from wherever and in this it kind of challenges that notion by saying hey in this case it was a computer and they rebelled against it and equally like at least in this case they're very mistaken by doing so they are i, I think i like that this sort of pokes at even my own bias a little bit in an interesting way i'm not going to say it changes any of my mind by any means not not at all but it it certainly prods at the ideas a little bit and makes you think about what people do have faith in and how science in this case looks like it is faith or it looks like it's uh you know just a parable from from some unseen force I, I, I think this this episode handling handling of these ideas is is what makes it very good, and um, I enjoy the performances of the leads well enough, and I think the the scene to scene progression is solid. But it's the overall ideas that I I really like. You know, it challenges the idea that they go to try and see the old man in the cave and they can't get in, and when they can't find proof of his existence, they all just start eating and drinking the food like there's no tomorrow. It, you know, it, it escalates from there because they they can't see the the, the proof. Um, it does raise some interesting questions as to why it was being kept so secret. You know, maybe that goes again to the idea that these characters wouldn't have wouldn't have trusted a computer or wouldn't have known as much about it. And maybe Goldsmith, who was the one getting the messages, he understood that they wouldn't sort of accept the messages of a machine, thinking they wouldn't follow its orders. But he maybe he knows enough to know know that it's accurate and know that it's something they should follow fundamentally the, 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 this is the same as trusting a thermometer uh, what the temperature is and saying no i know the thermometer says it's you know 30 degrees but it feels like 25 to me so i'm not going to believe it like it's it fundamentally comes down to to that <laughs> sense of disagreement but you're also dealing with characters who have been surviving in the post-apocalypse for 10 years who have been struggling to eat who have been probably not had much in the way of fun or enjoyment in that time i noted that there wasn't any kids in the episode you'd think this community would have some but uh maybe, maybe that was a conscious choice because they thought oh this will be too dark if there's probably because of the ending it's too dark if we have kids lying around dead probably couldn't get away with that on the on on tv and uh in the 60s i imagine uh i mean depending on the network and the show you may have a hard time getting away with that and present day tv to be honest i i do actually really like this episode it, it probably only falls down slightly because it doesn't have like a core character whose story i get really into and i'm building up to what their conclusion is it's definitely more of a concept episode with themes and ideas and i like the way it makes me think i like the way it makes me think about these groups and if anything that that uh, conversation or that speech that major french gives earlier on where he's talking about the other towns and he talks about how some of them are worshiping you know cult leaders and they're, they've become zealots and they're they're becoming kind of just this, this these fantastical things because they need to believe in something it's kind of interesting that that almost foreshadows that they've almost been following their own kind of god in a way but Again, the twist here is that the 
the god is actually the same thing we use in the real world to to tell us information uh which is ironic for, for one it's a little it's got a little sort of dark tinge of irony to it which I, I really appreciate it flips the concepts that it sets up on its head a little bit and brings into the you know, the, the, the overall theme of trusting technology uh, it sort of mixes that into all of this as well it's funny because a show made in 1960s you, the idea of like should we trust technology in that time period feels so quaint I think to a modern audience because technology has sped up in its advancement over years you know the technology in the 60s was night and day ahead of what was around at the start of the century and the technology that's around in 2023 is even further night and day ahead of what was in 1960 you know these things just they keep advancing uh, quicker and quicker these days it feels like oh we're having these these conversations and we're having we're talking about AI now, we're talking about manipulation of things. Um, fundamentally, it almost always comes down to how people are using it, though, and what they're using it to do, and using it to trick people, and if you can't trust technology, it's probably something more to do with a person, and I was almost expecting it to kind of go into that with uh, Goldsmith, is that is he changing any of the information? Is he being unreliable as a as a sort of intermediate with the with the old man in the cave with the machine i don't know uh but it's funny because these, these are concepts i love like I, I'm, I'm i'm seeing them pop up in a few different things right now i've been working through person of interest there's a lot of technology and trusting technology themes in that uh there's a limited series on fx right now a murder at the end of the world one of the huge themes in that is trusting or not to trust technology it's definitely something as we you know as we get cell phones as we get internet and more advanced computing and all these things that it's a subject that's only becoming more and more and more relevant and i think the idea of comparing it to trusting a god is is interesting is the episode saying that because they lost faith that's why they died so is it promoting the idea of having faith in a religion or is it more just the idea that once you do have a have a belief in place that you use to to live your life that if you give up the one that you have chosen you, you know things will fall apart when it all if you if you stop if you, if you if you abandon it completely or is it just a case of you have to believe in something it doesn't really matter which one it is necessarily you just need something to kind of keep you in the same way that you need a routine to sort of keep uh, a healthy and active lifestyle to keep your mental health going you you need something to kind of channel your your energies to it's, it's good it's good it's a really thought-provoking episode uh so i would say it's uh, another great season five episode honestly i think season five they're not all been amazing but we're seven episodes in and we've got three or four really good ones by this point so things are looking good i'll just say so uh next time on twilight zone we've got an episode called uncle simon Here's the uh, description on IMDb. Caregiver Barbara Polk receives a surprise after her uncle's death. Based on the image that's on IMDb, I've got a pretty good feeling she's getting a robot. <laughs> Looks a lot like uh, the robot from Forbidden Planet at a glance, but uh, I'm noticing here directed by Don Siegel, who, if my memory is serving me correct... That's the director of the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I'm going to click on his name here just to confirm that. It is also Dirty Harry and Escape from Alcatraz. Ooh, okay. So we got a big time director next next episode. Very, very cool. So yeah, that, that's my thoughts on uh, on the old man in the cave. I thought it was really, a really good episode. A really good, like pure science fiction episode where we're presenting these ideas and themes and we're just kind of sort of seeing how these characters end up by adhering or not adhering to what's in front of them and uh you know as, as, a, as a 25 minute story goes i think it it, it packed it with a lot of great ideas and details so uh good stuff uh so let me know what you thought of this one in the comments like subscribe all that stuff helps out a lot and of course you can support everything over at patreon.com slash tv and get bonuses, including a monthly bonus review of Columbo, which I've been working through one per month. And, you know, it would be weird not to also say, check out the other TV reviews that I, I've mentioned. You know, I mentioned two other shows dealing with similar themes earlier on in Murder at the End of the World and Person of Interest. 
and you can check out the movie podcast over on Mail Fuzz Movies, or get them on uh, podcast feeds if you if you want to do that instead. Uh, but there's a science fiction movie podcast called The Atomic Cinema Experiment. Go check out that if you want more sci-fi talk. But that's me, so thank you very much for joining. I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV in the Twilight Zone. <laughs>